Okay, so let's switch topics and now talk about some of the COVID-19 precautions that we'll be taking in 2021. So regardless of vaccination status, masks are going to be required to be worn by election judges while inside the polling place. So we'll be providing KN95 masks for all of our election judges. You can certainly bring your own mask or face covering from home. Face shields are not an acceptable substitute. And then if you'd like a break from wearing the mask, you can do so outside of the early voting location. And unlike last year, we will not be providing tabletop shields for any of the locations. For our voters, we'll be providing complimentary single-use masks. Voters are certainly encouraged to wear masks. If they refuse, we can offer the curbside voting method. However, if they still refuse, we'll just process them as normal and no other action is necessary. So the key takeaway here is that voters must be allowed to vote even if they do not wear a mask. We're gonna ask that you organize your location so that judges can sit six feet apart. Now, I completely understand that each location is unique and certainly some of the locations are tight for space. So just do the best that you can with that instruction. We're also going to ask you to encourage social distancing between voters. So we will be providing a tape measure and some blue tape to mark those uh, standing areas. Um, but then also we'll ask the greeter judge, I think I mentioned this earlier, we'll ask the greeter judge to help uh, with line management too. We will be providing uh, some hand sanitizer for both the election judges and for the voters. We'll be providing some surface cleaner and paper towels. Now our office's expectations have changed compared to last year. Uh, this year, we'll just ask you to clean the voting booths and the tables um, and any other shared surfaces periodically, not necessarily after every voter. So that's a difference from last year. And then last, we're gonna be providing some voting equipment wipes. Now they're alcohol-based and they're specific to the voting equipment. So make sure not to use the general surface cleaner or paper towels on the scanner or touch rider. Instead, use the voting equipment wipes. Now, again, same expectation, expectation with the other shared surfaces. We just want you to clean those devices periodically throughout the day. Okay, we've reached our last section, which is some additional administrative duties. The first topic is ranked voting. So St. Paul utilizes the ranked voting method, but only for their mayoral and city council races. Ranked voting does not is not used uh, for the school district race. We will be providing the ranked voting posters that's uh, pictured here in all of the early voting locations. If you have any additional questions about the process, feel free to ask the head election judge at your early voting location, uh, and they can certainly relay those questions to us. Some of our precincts will have a school district split. So that means if a voter lives in the 621 side of Arden Hills 1, they will get a specific kind of ballot. If they live in the 623 side of Arden Hills 1, they'll get a different kind of ballot. So for our ballot judges, please be aware that there are some school district splits and that you'll need to provide the voter with the correct ballot. Okay, now let's talk more uh, in detail about the ballot return process. So just as a quick overview, mailed ballots can be returned at any of the early voting locations by the voter or another person, uh, which legally is called the voter's agent. Your job as an election judge is to review the signature envelope, and the signature envelope is that official envelope that the ballot comes in, and you're reviewing it for completion. And again, the head judge can go ahead and assign somebody to monitor this, uh, this activity specifically if we do have enough voters that wanna take advantage of that service. All of the information related to the ballot return process will be documented in a guide. Now this guide will be given to each early voting location. So if you're confused or have questions after viewing this training, you will be able to read through the information on the guide. Of course, you can ask your head election judge or you can contact our office directly. Along with their blank ballot, 
voters in Minnesota will receive one of two signature envelopes that will be sent to them through the mail when they request their absentee ballot. Now, the signature envelope is going to have a label at the top that lists the voter's name, address, and precinct. But you, as the election judge, will need to verify that the rest of the signature envelope is completed properly. So what information is it that you're looking for? You're looking for the voter's ID number. Make sure that that's filled in properly. The voter then needs to sign. Okay. Now, unlike last year, uh, the voter will need a witness. So this was a change from last year. So the witness will need to view the voter's blank ballot and they'll need to uh, be eligible to vote in Minnesota. They'll need to provide their name, their address, and their signature. So when you are receiving that dropped off uh, absentee ballot, you'll want to verify that all of that information is completed properly on the signature envelope. The other type of signature envelope is for non-registered voters. So similar thing, the voter, uh, excuse me, the label at the top will include the voter's name, address, and precinct. The voter will need to provide their ID number and sign, and then the witness will need to provide their name, their address, and their signature. Now, this is for a non-registered voter, so the witness also needs to indicate what election day registration material they saw to prove that the voter is currently in the precinct for which we sent them a ballot. Now, uh, the witness will need to tick a box that indicates what type of registration material they saw. So you as an election judge need to make sure that when you receive these non-registered signature envelopes, that all the information is completed, including that one of those boxes is ticked. If one of those boxes is not ticked uh, and you take that envelope, unfortunately, Ramsey County Elections will not be able to accept it and will need to get in contact with the voter uh, to reissue them a ballot. So. This job is very important that you're thorough in particular with making sure that all of the information on the envelope is completed properly. A little bit more detail about this process. If the voter is returning their own ballot, they don't need to complete any paperwork. If the signature envelope, either one registered or non-registered, is missing the voter's information, then the voter can just fill it out right there. However, if the voter is missing some of the witness information, we can't accept that envelope because it's incomplete. However, they can vote with you that day at the early voting location. They'll need to refill out an absentee ballot application, but they can be treated like anybody else. They can just go through the early voting process. If the ballot is returned by a person other than the voter, that's called the voter's agent and they will need to fill out some additional paperwork. That other paperwork is called the absentee ballot agent delivery log, and they'll actually need to show you, the election judge, their ID, okay? An agent can return ballots for up to three other people but that rule applies for the entire election. So an agent can't do three one day, three the next day, three the next day. Nope, three for the entire election period, okay? If an agent requests to obtain a ballot for somebody else, you can go ahead and just instruct them to contact our office. That is a service that we provide. It's specific to the week before election day, and they will need to do that process down at the Plato office building. Here's a picture of the agent delivery log. So uh, the agent would need to complete this for each voter that they're bringing uh, a ballot back for. So if they're bringing three ballots back, they need to fill in this log three separate times. So they're writing in the, na the date, their name, their address, and then the absentee voter's name and address, and then they'll need to sign. If uh, an agent is bringing down this the voter's ballot and the signature envelope is missing some information. It can't be accepted by the elections office. So you'll want to encourage the agent to return that envelope to the voter so that they can complete it properly. Uh, 
Um, if the agent insists on leaving it with you, even though you know that it's incomplete, you can take it and the elections office, again, we, we won't be able to process it or count it, but we will get in contact with the voter to let them know of their voting options. We will be offering the curbside voting method during the early voting period. So a voter can vote curbside, which just means they stay in their car or they're voting outside if they're unable to access the polling place. We will be providing signage specific to your early voting location. Uh, we issue iPhones to all of our head election judges to make it easier to communicate between our office and the location. And the sign that will be placed outside for curbside voting will have the number that rings to that specific iPhone. So if a voter calls, they will be contacting the head judge uh, specifically on that iPhone to let them know that they're outside and uh, awaiting service. Um, also, voters can return their mailed ballot outside so they can walk into the polling place and return their signature envelope, um, or they can do it outside in their car. If a voter calls, we're going to ask that the greeter judge walks outside and provides that absentee ballot application. Once it's completed, we'll need to get that application back inside where an SVRS judge enters that application and retrieves the correct ballot. Now here's where we'll need two election judges of different major political parties. They'll need to bring out the ballot along with a secrecy sleeve, a pen, an I voted sticker, and then remember that voter certificate is on the back side of the absentee ballot application that the voter completed. So they'll need to bring that out as well. Once that material is brought out to the voter, first thing you'll have the voter complete the back side of that application called the voter certificate. Then the voter can fill in their ballot. Uh, you'll want to ask the voter to remain in their car until both judges bring that ballot back and make sure that it gets cast properly. And then uh, you can go outside and notify, that the, notify the voter that the ballot has been cast. Election judges can assist an unlimited number of voters during the early voting period. When assisting with activities other than marking a ballot, specifically completing an application or translation, law allows for only one election judge to assist with those activities. And we ask that you only help as much as you are requested to by the voter. However, if you are assisting in marking a ballot, that's when you'll need two judges of different major political parties coming in to help with that activity. Now, you'll need to do so in accordance with the voter's direction solely, okay? You'll need to enter the voting area and remain with the voter the entire process. And make sure to direct questions and information to the voter, not to somebody else that may be with the voter. Uh, and then you can also use the voter's marked sample ballot uh, for direction when marking a ballot inside the booth. Any person the voter chooses can assist in marking the ballot, except the voter's employer or agent of the voter's employer, an officer or agent of the voter's union. So anybody else, the voter can ask to help them with, the, with uh, assistance. They can also help with some of the other activities, completing the application, translation with any of the election judges or particularly the SVRS judge, um, and then again with marking a ballot. That person though needs to stay with the voter throughout the entire process and then leave when the voter exits. Last topic that we're gonna cover is campaigning and buffer zones. An individual cannot linger within the early voting location and they must expressly be there to vote or assist another voter. No campaigning is allowed inside an early voting location or on the property of the building. Voters may wear political clothing as long as it does not contain candidate names or words and phrases from questions on the ballot or other races that are on the ballot. We have reached the end of the early voting training for 2021. Thank you for participating. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to our office. Otherwise, 
please ask your head judge during the early voting period. They will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you very much.